Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Karen and I'm here to help you get the most out of your iPad whether that is with lettering or art or journaling. In my last video I talked about how much I love watercolors as a form of creativity. I find it incredibly relaxing and so I thought we could do this fun project today where we combine watercolors with these cute little leaf doodles. I got the idea from Creation CC, who creates these with real watercolors and pens and so I wanted to see if it's possible to do the same thing on the iPad. And as it turns out, it's actually quite easy to do this and I find it so relaxing and calming. We'll be using that Procreate app, of course, and the canvas size I have for this project is 2048 pixels by 2560 pixels. I'm using my small watercolor template here, which already has a watercolor background. The brushes I'm going to use today are my watercolor fruit painting brushes and we are going to start with the watercolor shape brush. But before we start painting, let's set up a drawing guide to make it a little bit easier to paint our squares. And so we are going to go to the canvas menu and we see drawing guide. You want to turn this on and now we're going to edit the drawing guide and we're going to make the grid really, really large so that it has nine squares. You might need to move this a little bit, but really we want to have nine squares here and we don't want them to go all the way to the edge either. So we're going to do it like this. This is looking good, so we're tapping done. And so now we have that basic drawing guide. And then the next thing we need to do is select a color palette. And I've actually selected my IPL Summer Shades color palette here just as a starting point. We are going to change the colors later on in the tutorial, but I just started with this. And if you wanted this color palette, you can find it on my website. I'm just going to choose this nice peach color to start with and then with the watercolor shape brush I'm now going to start painting the rectangles here. So you want to paint these rectangles and never lift your app pencil off the canvas while you are painting this and then you can go over the edge a little bit more and create a little bit of an irregular edge here that gives it a really nice watercolor look and feel. And then we're going to go and select the next color and then we're just going to keep painting until we have nine squares painted here. All right, so now this is looking very good and we don't need our drawing guide anymore. So we can just turn off like this. And then another thing I want to do is actually instead of having squares, I want these shapes to be rectangles. So now we can select the whole layer and we can just resize them all at once. I think I like them a little bit better as rectangles and then when we create our lettering piece here at the bottom I think it'll look a little bit better. Right so now the next step we're going to do is add a new layer and you want to set the blend mode of this layer to overlay and what we're going to do now is intensify our watercolors a little bit. So you want to select that black color and then we're going to select that watercolor blend brush and now we are going over the edges and because we've selected the blend mode overlay all it does is it intensifies the colors a little bit that we already have on the canvas and so this is to bring out the watercolor texture ever so slightly more and to make it look a little bit more realistic and you see now this is quite intense so what we're going to do next is select the smudging tool with the same brush and now we're going to smudge this out and you want to use quite a bit of pressure on your smudging brush and then you can create some really nice watercolor effects here and really bring out those colors and the texture a lot more. You can also use the smudging tool on the layer below a little bit if you're not quite happy with that shape set. Might just adjust it ever so slightly here and even out some of these textures. And now I think it looks really good. So now the next thing I want to show you is actually how to change the colors. If you're not quite happy with the colors, it's really easy to change. So what we're going to do first is take a copy of this layer just so that we have a spare one and you can see now how this has intensified the colors and you might like this, but I'm going to turn this off and now we are going to select the curves tool here. I'm going to tap on layer. 
And now we can adjust the colors here. This is especially useful if you have a lot of different values of different colors here and you want to even them out ever so slightly. So we're going to start with gamma, which will adjust all the colors that we currently have on the screen. And you can see now how you can lighten them and make them look sort of more watercolory, especially if you have chosen quite saturated colors. So I think this is a super useful trick. And you can also see how now this evens out the values of the whole color palette. But then of course you might not like the color palette you've chosen and you might like to adjust this as well and this is what these other settings here are for. So now we can start moving this and you can see now how the colors adjust themselves depending on how I move the slider here. So this brings it a lot more into the red values and then let's see what happens if we move the greens. So we can make it green if you wanted to or maybe more purple. And so you can play around and really dial in exactly the color palette that you would like to see. And then also what you can do, you can compare it to the previous version by tapping on the screen and tapping preview. And so you can see now how we have evened out the color values of the color palette we had before. And I think this is looking really nice. But now, of course, it's time for our doodle. So we got to go and add another new layer. And then we are going to select a different brush. And for this, I recommend that you have a look in the inking section of Procreate brushes. And I particularly like the Studio pen here because it's pressure sensitive. And then what you might like to do as well is go to the stroke path and then turn up streamline to the max. That makes it a little bit easier to draw straight lines. And now it's time to start doodling. And this is what I find so relaxing. Now we can just be as creative as we want to be and draw little doodles and just see what pops in our head. All right, so now we have our doodles all done and you definitely want to be super loose with these. These are really for relaxation and you can doodle whatever pops in your head. But what I really think will add a little bit to your composition is if we create some white background. So now what we're going to do is open the layers panel and add a new layer, but you want to add this layer below your doodles layer. And then we're going to change to white and we're also going to change our brush. Of course, you could carry on with the studio pen, but I very much like using the watercolor shape brush for this step because it creates a little bit of a watercolor texture. So all you want to do here is decrease the size a little bit just to make it a bit more precise. And now we can paint in the right color here. And you don't even have to be too precise. If there's a bit of an overlap. I don't think it matters too much. And then maybe here we make it a bit bigger just so it's a bit faster and you could even let the background color come through a little bit if you like this look I think this is actually quite neat and so I'm not going to fill it 100% with white especially on those larger parts here but then here with the smaller leaves I think it looks nice if it's quite opaque and then if you are watching the creations CC videos, you'll see that she's using gold as well. And I think gold would actually look really nice. So if you want me to make another video and show you how you can paint with gold, definitely leave a comment so then I can make another video and show you how you could do that as well. But for now, I think white actually looks really cute. So I'm just going to stick to white for this video here. And now you can see how much the white background adds to the composition. It just makes it pop a little bit nicer and I really like it. So now we're going to group all these layers and then we are going to duplicate everything. I'm going to turn the bottom group off. I just keep this as a copy because I want to resize this whole group now. Because the next step is to create the little lettering at the bottom as well. So it's just going to make it ever so slightly smaller. And you can see now you can still resize this as well to make it fit perfectly on the page. So we're going to turn on snapping as well. 
and then we can center it in the center of the canvas like this and if you have the watercolor template you'll see that it's also got the guide so we can turn this on and if you don't have the template then I recommend that you use the drawing guide so we are going to create another new layer and then we're going to go back to the black color and then for the lettering part you can choose any of your favorite lettering brush and I'm going to choose the fountain pen which is part of the real brushes I really love this brush and I think it really lends itself for this type of artwork so now we're going to write tranquility and I'm going to use a bit of an eccentric lettering style here with really long letters and I know this is not super readable, but I see this lettering more as a piece of art that belongs to this composition. And so, of course, I'm never happy with the first time when I'm writing something like this. So what I normally do is create a new layer, turn the opacity of the previous layer down, and then I just trace the letters and I'll try and be better the second time around. And this is the beauty, obviously, of using the iPad over pen paper because you can't really make a mistake. You can just try it again and write it better the next time. And I still don't like it, so I'm actually going to do it again. And sometimes I'm actually doing this 10 times or even more. And so what I do, I trace these letters over and over and I do it again and again until I'm happy with the look of my word. And I know that the A and the Q here, they look quite similar, but I don't mind it too much. I'm more after the overall look of this word. And so I'm actually quite happy to leave it like this even though it's maybe not the most readable but I like the look of it so I think this looks pretty good so now we can turn that guide off again and we can maybe resize this a bit also if you're really not happy with the alignment of the letters you can also use the warp tool I do that sometimes just to adjust my letters especially the angles ever so slightly and then we are finished. I really hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you like that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And then I'm also going to put up another couple of Procreate tutorials so you can keep watching and you can keep learning more about how to be creative with your iPad. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.